Hello there, my name is Kuma, and today I'm giving you my first impressions on Bobbing. Hey, they finally did it, they got to army out of jail, they released the burn ritualist. And a nice looking one at that. I am a big fan of heterochromia, so I always enjoy seeing a new operator with different colored eyes just like Bobby. But also, I couldn't help but notice that Bobby looks a lot like our spirit in her skin. And my impressions didn't deceive me. This is because our spirit and Bobby are from the same artist. That's why they look alike. Tell me they don't look alike. Anyway, I'm happy to finally see a burn ritualist. I hold the opinion that burn is stronger than necrosis, at least on a fundamental level. The rest shred effect it has is just way too good. But of course I won't see Bobby turning burning into the elemental damage people use, simply because he is a 5 star. Regardless of what he has, he won't take the throne from Virtuosa. Let's talk about his kit. His talent doesn't feel very nice when I'm looking at it for the first time. Bobby inflicts a burn DLT the first time he attacks each enemy. It works kinda like Aroma does, although this might not be the best comparison. She hasn't been released on Yen just yet, but I will use her as a comparison anyway. The first time Aroma attacks each enemy, she levitates them. The first time Bobby attacks each enemy, they take some burn damage every second for a few seconds. This feels weird though, it really feels like a nothing burger of a talent. I guess this could help inflicting burn faster on elites, which will probably kill in the first burn proc. But against bosses this might not be relevant at all. I don't know, it just doesn't feel like this talent fits with Bob in the same way Aroma's talent does. Either way, as a ritualist, Bobbin's talent hardly matters as long as he procs burn. And he can do that in his skills. His S1 looks like it's going to be a power strike that also inflicts burn, the same way Valar Queen's S1 works. Her skill inflicts arts damage and necrosis damage. I imagine it will be the same for Bobby. Some arts damage and some burn. But of course we need to wait for his release to see the numbers exactly and to see if he is going to have this split as well. This will probably be the skill you will use for bosses either way, just because of the consistency in beating out elemental damage, but if the SP is the same as Valar Queen's S1, it won't be a very nice skill just for normal play against small enemies. Because the skill will only come out every few seconds and since it only targets a single enemy, it's just not good for dealing with crowds, like, at all. I guess they don't want the consistency that their S1 gives, just proccing a bunch of elemental damage in sequence in a lot of enemies. I guess that's why the SP cost on Valar Queens and Virtuosa's S1 even, they are basically the same, are the way they are. And I can only imagine that it will be the same for Bobby. I don't know why they would change the formula. But that said, he will be nice for dealing with bosses, because it will be consistent if the boss is the only thing that he's targeting. He will proc a lot of burn a lot of the time, and you just have the rest shred with that, you can pair with your casters, and you can do a lot of damage with them. He will be a nice support if you're doing arts damage. Now for his S2, because his S2 is more interesting. Bobbin creates a 3 tile area with one of the weirdest ranges I've seen in this game. Two tiles away from him is the center of the skill, and it extends one tile to each side, so three tiles. While Valar Queen could only inflict necrosis to two enemies in range, Bobby has unlimited targets, and that is quite nice. As we all know, true AoE always comes in handy one way or another. Of course his range looks awkward, but I don't think it will be bothersome to play around. If you can make Ifrit work with a single tile, you can find a decent placement for Bobby, and he will do fine. Well, as long as you don't expect to kill all enemies without any effort on slowing, or blocking, or anything like that. Come on, you're looking at the wrong rarity for that. The burn damage doesn't look very high. If you look at the animation, you'll see the elemental bar going down very slowly, but that's kinda to be expected. 
Valor Queen only deals 35% of her attack as Necrosis on M3, so Bobbin will probably have a low modifier like that as well. It shouldn't really be a problem though. I imagine he will be able to proc burn on most things in the game, except those weird enemies with AD res that are extremely rare. Even though, it does feel weird that burn damage that lowers res is hard to proc on high res enemies. But it is what it is, it's something we have to deal with. Now, before I give some more thoughts on Bobbin, let's see the mystery enemy of last video. Who was? Big Bob! Congratulations if you got it right! Bob has the stats of a defender. This guy is just an elite cosplaying as a boss. Good for him he managed to become a tycoon after he bought his farm, because the battlefield is not the place for him. The only thing he has to his name is his attack stat, which is indeed very high. What a design for the boss of the first event in the game. Now, tell me in the comments who do you think this enemy is? It should be an easy one too. And come back next time to see the answer. Ok, so Bobbin is just a simple burn ritualist. He will do what we wanted. He will make Warmies as too playable. Regardless of what you think about their damage and utility, now her is too is playable at least. That is something to be happy about. Her pot lead got stuck in jail even after being released. And that's just unfortunate to see, you know? You should only be stuck in jail before you get released. I have always had the opinion that her S1 is fine, but having her S2 not capable of doing what's supposed to do just because the answer doesn't exist always felt terrible. Sometimes you have operators that you're just not willing to do what they want you to do, but that's because of your choice. In Warmy's case, it was the game's choice, and that's just not okay. Of course, if you only care about power, Burn won't win against Necrosis. Nymph and Virtuosa were made to be god-destroying beasts when played together. The whole of IS-5 has a lot of incentives for you to play with Nymph and just destroy the whole game without any effort. There really isn't any comparison there between Burn and Necrosis when it comes to the operators that we have in the game right now. But I still hold the opinion that Burn is the stronger effect on a basis. Not that I particularly want my point to be proven though, I'm not waiting for the 6 star Burn operators, so if you don't wanna believe in me, that's fine, I'm happy with it. Bobbing sounds fun to play with. Even if you take Warmy out of the equation, as all ritualists do, they don't really need a primal caster to do their job 100%, and I can only imagine that it will be extremely satisfying to proc burn on a massive wave of enemies. Oh boy, I can't wait to do a setup on GTHX3. Bobby will explode all those small defenders, it will be simply amazing. But I do think Bobbin will be a fine choice for AoE, just in general, since he has true AoE, and Burn does deal a decent amount of damage as well. But other than that, we can only wait for the numbers before we say anything else. Don't forget to like the video, tell me your thoughts about Bobbin in the comments, and I hope everyone has a very nice day. Peace out.